What's going on you guys? It's Eli with Common Sense and I hope you're having a fantastic week. Today we're going to be looking at a fragrance from Fragrance World and we're going to be looking at M7, no, not M7, Absolute Oud Magnificent 7. It's different because this is like $30 and the other one is like a hundred something dollars. This one has actually been popping in and out of my shopping cart. I put it in and then I chicken out last minute because I'm like, I don't need a million fragrances. I just really want the expensive ones that I purchase and eh, it's 30 bucks. So maybe it's worth it, maybe not. And I end up just not buying it. But I finally got over that and I decided to pick this one up. So is this worth the price? And mainly does it smell good? Are you going to have terrible regrets buying this one? We're gonna find that out right now. So don't go anywhere, stay tuned. Thank you all so much for joining me and today we're going to be looking at Fragrance World's Absolute Oud Magnificent 7. This box is totally giving me 70s vibes. You got a very simple presentation for this package and it's very similar to the other ones. You got the holographic logo on the left hand side and you've got all of the information right here. This one was manufactured in February of 2022. This is an old bottle. I mean, old-ish. And it doesn't expire until 2027. Now, doesn't this look familiar? Now, if I'm not mistaken, this is copying the older M7 bottle style from Yves Saint Laurent. So I think they did change up the bottle style and it's more of a clear one now. And I think they ditched the black outside. At least I think that's what it was, if my memory serves me correct. Let's spray this out. Oh, that is a nice wide spray. Not a lot of them do that. They're more kind of centralized, but this is a nice sprayer, a nice atomizer. Very nice equal projection. Oh my God, that is strong. <laughs> that is definitely old school, but in a really good way. So Absolute Oud Magnificent 7 has top notes of mandarin orange, middle notes of patchouli, and base notes of agarwood, myrrh, and labdanum. So this is going to be a masculine, old school, heavy bomb. So immediately when I sprayed this one on my skin, I wasn't the greatest fan. I think the patchouli and the myrrh and the labdanum were a little bit loud and just definitely in your face. And it smelled like a little bit of a powerhouse fragrance, something from maybe the 90s or the 70s. But I think as I started to wear this more, and as it started to dry down, it's actually slowly turned into one of my favorite fragrances. I actually posted about this one a while ago and I had been wearing it almost for a solid week and that is quite rare, especially when I get a new fragrance. I try to wear it maybe once or twice, give it some rest and then kind of put it in the rotation. But this one, I slowly became obsessed with it and I really was wearing it for maybe one or two weeks straight as my scent of the day. So that's quite a feat. The patchouli, the myrrh and the labdanum are absolutely beautiful here. And I think the myrrh and the frankincense definitely come off as classy so that patchouli is definitely at the forefront especially at the top that's kind of what jumped out to me especially when I first tried it that's what a little bit turned me off especially when I first tried it out but as I gave it some more wears the myrrh and the labdanum quickly became the forefront of this one and I just fell in love with it so the myrrh and the labdanum make it smell very old school kind of old world like especially with the patchouli it smells a little bit somber a little bit cold but the myrrh the labdanum and the agarwood here give it quite a bit of warmth and it's kind of a cool effect it actually mirrors kind of what the bottle is doing you have a very dark composition with a tiny little bit of that orange that mandarin and the kind of fruitiness peeking out from the bottom so i think that's kind of a cool design choice not really the fragrance world, but in the original Yves Saint Laurent. So gotta give it to the original designers for that. I think as this starts to dry down a little bit, you definitely get a little bit more of a cola vibe. It's a little bit rooty, especially from the patchouli. So it's still a little bit earthy, but I feel like it gives me a little bit of a comparison to Dr. Pepper. So that cola, that slightly sweet rooty kind of vibe with a little bit of that plum that gives it that extra bit of fruity sweetness. I think that kind of shares a little bit of the similarity, but but at the same time, it smells very dusty. It smells a little bit old school. And I think the agar wood definitely attributes to that a little bit. I feel like I'm getting a little bit of orris root or some sort of oak moss in here that gives it a little bit of that classy style. But I think they do it in a way that makes it smell a little bit more modern. So you're not gonna be smelling like an old man with this one. You're gonna be smelling like old money. You're gonna be smelling like you have yourself put together and that you know what you're doing. So I can see an executive or CEO kind of wearing this one or if you're trying to attain that high level position, I feel like if you wear this, you're gonna put yourself in that mindset 
and you're going to set those goals and work harder towards that. So that's kind of why I was wearing it because I was like, I want to move up. I want to smell good. And this was just kind of giving me that courage and that motivation to continue to strive for the better things in life. So as it dries down, the oud isn't very animalistic. It's more of a soft oud. It's kind of similar to something in Tamin's carved oud. I think I also get a little bit of an herbal chai herbaceous kind of dry down as well. So it smells a little bit mature. It's got that earthy green tea kind of vibe. It could be a black tea or a green tea, just something tea herbal and just kind of herbaceous. Again, it has a little bit of that cola vibe once it dries down, but that patchouli comes off very strong and it's still very sweet and a little bit powdery in the base. So it's definitely a masculine scent. And if you are a woman who loves wearing just dark things like leather, I feel like you could definitely pull this off. And as long as you're confident, I think you can wear whatever you want, but definitely not for the faint of heart if you don't like that very strong old school vibe with the patchouli with the agar wood i don't think you're going to enjoy this fragrance but i think it may take a couple wearings to really appreciate this dna now i don't own the original m7 oud absolu or the original m7 but i have smelled people in the past i've encountered them i know friends and family who have smelled just like this. So I'm assuming that they were wearing the original thing or original M7 or something similar to it. But just judging based off of how this smells, I think it smells absolutely fantastic. Now this is about an eight to 10 hour fragrance, depending on how crazy you go with the sprays. And it's very strong in the first few hours. So you can definitely get it wafting up if you spray it on your clothes or inside, like under your shirt or on your collar. I think that is a nice way to make it it last a little bit longer and project that scent bubble around you a little bit more. But this being in the $30 price tag, I think it's perfectly fine for that price. If you want something affordable in that $30 price range, and if you want to smell close to that, I'm imagining it's very close. And that one is Absolute Oud Magnificent 7 by Fragrance World. So that does it for today's video. Thank you so much for joining me. Please consider liking and subscribing if you enjoy fragrance related content because I love making this stuff and I love pushing it out to you guys and just interacting with you and meeting new people. Thank you all so much for watching. I've been Eli with Common Sense. Until the next time, bye bye I feel like I can taste it in my mouth. I need to do less of these sprays. <laughs>